Hello everyone, welcome back. This is Pino Trogo from San Francisco State University and this is the Q project for the introduction to drawing for designers class. It's part two. Uh, the first thing I'm gonna do is review what we did in the first section, in the first part, very quickly so that we refresh memory. And uh, so the first assignment was to do um, just a bunch of different sections of a square, um, which will be the face, the face of our cube, and it's a four by four grid. And we started at the center on the left, and we ended up anywhere on the right, uh, with maybe two, three lines, maybe four. And then we picked one section, which was this one, and we also uh, labeled our points on the grid because these are going to be useful later. Um, some of them repeat. So I'm just going to do that now and you should, um, for this project, you should have this handy too because CDE, I have to make sure I don't make a mistake. Yeah. Okay. Looks like a lot, but there's really, I think, only five different letters. Um, and when we picked that um, design, we used uh, rotations and flips and, and things to get, oops. yeah, so this was our initial design. We mirror it, uh, we got that pattern, and then we took that. So we did a mirror of the first shape and then we took the the, the complete sec group of second shapes and we rotated that 180 uh, to get that, okay? And by the way, earlier we talked about flips and 180, um, of course, is from here to here, right? Because 360 is the total um, and this would be 90. And we have said, we said that actually you can achieve the same thing by the way, this could just rotate on a different point and it would be the same thing if I rotate it like this. Gotta keep one still. Um, so to get that. So doing this, 180, oops, that wasn't good. Um, 180 on that point on this point right here at the end on the right um, gives us the other side. And I could achieve that also by doing a flip like this and then another flip like that. So two, two, eight, two 180 in space or 180 on the plane like that. Um, so that's our design, that will be our cube. Um, and it might be somebody's cube too in the class, I'm not sure <laughs> it's possible if, um, if it happens that way. Um, so this is now already done, but we will have to build it. Uh, so we're gonna leave the top and bottom alone, even though there is a way to do those as well. Um, and uh, so what we'll do for this assignment is, is in part documentation, but in part actually um, drawing the grid, the beginning uh, at full scale, which since we're at home, um, and since you can't really turn in the paper assignment, um, why don't you go ahead and use this then to build the actual cube, even though this is a drawing in itself. So this will be our, um, let's see our design looks like uh, this, yeah. In other words, we're gonna be doing this drawing on a very nice piece of paper. Uh, which it then can use um, to use the compass, even a push pin to get it onto another piece of paper to make all your parts possibly. Okay, so this is the design, you know, with the usual information. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I, um, I sh I'm going to show you a couple that I've already drawn. Um, different sections uh, and this actually will give you the specs of how to place the drawing in the in the sheet okay 
So let's see. Yeah, this fits. So these are uh, nine by 12 sheets, okay. And um, it's Bristol board. And um, so we're gonna do four by four square on the left and one by one by one by one, uh, the reduced version of the whole cube. And these are the dimensions. So a half inch left and right, top and bottom, um, three quarter inch for the title block. And um, I'll repeat how to do that now. Uh, one and a half inch from the top of the title block. Uh, that's where we're gonna make uh, the drawing set. Okay, so it's a little bit more space at the top. And uh, <clears throat> you should use uh, 2H lead. Okay, for the drawing for the video, I'm going to be using HB because that you can that way you can see it. It's softer, a little bit um, thicker line, uh, but you should use 2H. Okay, and you should not use, even though I can't be there <laughs> to uh, make you not use it on these guys, which are you know which everybody has this. Uh, they're no good really for this type of drawing All right So my lead broke so I'm gonna have to sharpen it and For that you should have well this gadget is a little expensive about ten fifteen dollars um, Different types I mean different brands But if you don't have this you can use um, sandpaper and I have this Fancy little gadget which actually used to belong to my teacher um, who passed away and it has two kinds of sandpaper a real rougher one so i'm turning it and turning my lead here and then i do it on a well i need to do a lot more i'm not going to do it now but that's what you could use two pieces of sandpaper one little like maybe 200 no maybe 180 and then 220. Um, so yeah sandpaper would be 180 and then 220. Um, but now for the sake of time, I'm just gonna use my gadget. I'm gonna put it in. You have to put in quite a bit. And then the thing sharpens it for you. And you kind of feel it, you have to be careful not to break the lead. And when it doesn't grind anymore, uh, at this point, I should have a little piece of cloth, but I don't, so I'm going to use a piece of paper. You can see it, it's pretty um, sharp. Let's see how sharp it is. There we go. Not bad. Um, you can make it even sharper by you know, doing a little bit of that on the paper. But because it's HB it's gonna get unsharp blunt pretty fast um, again I'm doing it for the video so you can see but a 2h wouldn't do that um, and some of these um, some of these lead holders I think the one that I specified I think it's this one the Stedler um, should come already with 2h Okay, so the mechanical pencil is sharp. Um, these are just two different versions. Um, you just need to draw this, okay? You don't need to draw, of course, all the dimensions. Um, just the pure drawing and maybe just add the letters, okay? Um, so what I'm gonna do is take a sheet from this Bristol pad we talked about, you should have gotten that. I've already ripped one out. It's nice and smooth. It's nine by 12. Um, I'm going to um, tape it to my board and you can't see it, but I'm gonna be using to be faster a T-square, okay? Which is gonna slide on the side of my desk, my board. Uh, it's gonna save me a little time but also show how to do it without if you didn't have a t-square um, because i have it now i'm just gonna line up my sheet nice and in other words i'm gonna line it up at the very edge here i'm gonna put some 
Um, let's see how it looks good. Um, some type. You can use drafting tape across the corner. I don't know if you can see it, but it's going this way, okay? Oops, I moved it before I put, there we go. Um, you shouldn't put too much over because otherwise you won't be able to draw the corners of the uh, border, um, which is half inch. All right. And because I know that everyone plays these videos probably at one and a half times to get ahead fast, um, I will actually do it fast. That way maybe you don't have to press a higher speed. Um, so got that, a pants and a razor. Um, I need a little sketch of what I'm gonna do. Well, actually no, because I, I won't be able to move it. Um, this is what we're gonna draw once again, okay? Four by four and four by three to fit the whole thing. Okay, the trick once again is to measure the least possible and help yourself with your T-square, well, with your triangles if you don't have a T-square, um, so that you do the drawing precisely and also saves you time. Uh, what I will do, um, these are nice, but actually I prefer these for the video. They're a little bit more, um, yeah, they, they, you, one can see them better. Um, and I'll be taking measurements um, with, a, uh, with a ruler, which you might have also, okay. Um, and that way I'll show you how, what I mean by not measuring too much or the least possible, okay? The most useful one for this drawing is the 45, 45. So 45 degrees, 45 degrees. And if you had a, a, a protractor, you know, you could measure that and you could see, okay, that's 45 degrees and that's 45 degrees right there, somewhere. Okay, so I'll start with the um, marking by borders. Oops, that's the problem. Here we go. Should have knocked the camera. Um, I start by marking pretty lightly and then doing uh, darker lines. Okay, so I'm gonna mark. Um, so once again, that's half inch, half of that is one quarter, half of that is one sixteenth, and half of that is one, sorry, one eighth and then one sixteenth. Um, so three quarters for the title block, and then half inch on the sides. Okay, so now you'll see that with the, uh, with the T square, I can just move it up and down. Um, and if you had one of those desks with the, you know, the attached with the wires, that would be even better. Um, but if I didn't have this, let me just quickly show how to, how you would do it. You might do it like this. You might set your triangle um, against the paper like that and then move it like this. Okay, and that would be just fine. Um, But because I have the T-square now, I'll use the T-square, especially for this stuff, which is kind of paperwork stuff. So you start with a lighter line and going a little bit over. I don't know how well you can see it in the video. Yeah, it's there. And this triangle is a little bit short, so I'll use that. Okay, and if you recall, remember to test your triangles to make sure it's straight, you draw a line, then you flip it and you draw it again to see if it matches, just in case the triangle may be messed up. Um, so, okay, now that I've done all my light lines, I'm gonna go ahead and darken them. 
And these lines should be the same, the same um, value, the same darkness as you're drawing inside, okay? Yeah, I don't like drawing with HB because it's just not as precise, but I think at this resolution will be okay. All right, so uh, what you wanna do when you use your triangle is you hold, if this was the other triangle, you hold it, but you also hold the paper. And then with this other hand, you just move your fingers up, lock it, draw, okay? There's, um, I showed that already in the tools video. So let's see. I can't quite see at the top there. Um, okay. Um, I will now, now I think I just need this one because if it's enough. So I'm gonna look at my drawing again real quick. Uh, one inch on the left, one and a half at the bottom. And I think the rest I'm gonna remember. One inch, one inch, yeah. So he, here we go, how to not do too many measurements. So, um, so that's my one inch and four inches. Then another inch, another four, and here it's not perfect, so I'm gonna leave the extra on the side. Um, oh, and actually here I need also the four inches inside. Well, I'm gonna need them on the other one too. So let's see. There, well, basically I've I've pretty much drawn one inch everywhere. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have to remember which is which. Okay, and then it was one and a half from the bottom. Right here. Um, yeah, let me show you. Instead of measuring now four inches this way, let me show how we can do it without measuring, okay? Um, so I'm going to start with the bottom here and all my lines are going to be um, light now. Okay. And I'm going to go fast because again, I want to make the video not so long. Um, I'm going to block it out first so you can see where I'm going. Um, now, well, here I only need three, but here I need four by four. I know this is four. Here's how I can do the four on the side. I just take my triangle and I draw a diagonal straight like that. And if I do it right, that should be four inches. And it is good. Um, I'm going fast. You should not go so fast because if we're gonna reuse this, um, it should be perfect. <laughs> so, and I'm pretty sure now mine is not gonna be absolutely perfect because that's what happens when you rush a little bit. Um, so that's one square here. We said we were gonna need only three inches. So here's how I'm gonna do the grid. By doing all my verticals like that, when they cross the diagonal, okay, I get my other points. And, um, and it's nice if you cross your lines. So leave this drawing, okay, meaning don't erase because it's, it looks cool if you leave the construction. Um, because it's soft, I'm unable to actually make my lines very evenly light or dark. You see, it, I'm drawing some light and some dark, but, um, so I'll leave that like that. On the side, I only need three. And again, if I didn't have a T-square, here's what I would do, okay? I would set. 
now I'm gonna use my new because I'm, I'm running out of space uh, yeah my cute little triangle from Italy um, so with two triangles you just set the one that so you pick up one line you know it's sure it's good and then you just repeat that uh, I can't see it <laughs> it's too short okay never mind Try that again. Like that. And like that. Okay. And then here I would do the same thing. Now I get to use my little triangle. So again, you slide it and then you lock it with your fingers like that. The problem is it's a little too small now. It, I don't have enough for a grip, but okay. I'm gonna go back to the T-square uh, just to speed up. Um, okay. Well, I know I have the full square. I need that, and here I know the, I need the cross, right? So I'm just gonna darken that because uh, for sure I'm gonna I'm gonna be using that when I draw. I actually roll it because that way the lead will stay sh as sharp as possible until I have to, and also start at the two ends and go towards the middle. Uh, and now I'm just gonna do, so here you cross the lines when you do the light, but when you do your drawing, your actual drawing, that way you start at the two ends and you make sure it's very, you know, the corner is very sharp. So you don't do this um, overlap business anymore, which is what I'm doing now, okay? And try to keep your, you know, try not to angle your pencil this way or the other way. And I mean, no, I didn't make a mistake. I thought I did. Oops. So now it's going to start to appear. And so in other words, every time you know there is a, you know, a piece that you kind of know it's going to be a certain way, you can go ahead and finish it because, see, I'm not touching that yet. I'm just finishing this. And this is definitely just a documentation piece, the one on the right, because it's scaled, right? Um, but the one on the left, again, because this is really good paper, we can use it for our cube, actually. Um, okay, so my section was, uh, and here's very important, once again, make sure you have something like this. In fact, I'm gonna probably, uh, it's gonna get in the way, but what I want to remember is that this is my start and this is my first shape, and everything is gonna flow from there. Okay, very important because well, that's exactly the same. Um, but if I all of a sudden start here, I might get confused. Uh, so, well, I tell you what, because I like crossing lines, I'm going to first do my lines light of what I need to draw because it looks pretty. And then I'm going to go back and darken it. Okay, looks very crafty, or craftsman-like. Um, but now we just wanna do that. Again, the best way is to start at the two ends and go towards the middle. That way you don't have to worry about stopping on a dime at the other end of the line. And I, and because you're going to overlap, you kind of lift up the pencil in the middle. There's a little bit of uh, lighter. Okay, so that's the left. And now here we have to draw our grid, right? Because otherwise we won't be able to. Um, and basically, I'm just going to copy that over here. So the grid, um, I'm going to quickly sharpen my pencil a little bit. Now this can be 
convenient, right? Because it's right there. Not quite super sharp, but that's okay. I'll move that for a while, otherwise I can't, I can't. Uh, and now I'm just gonna use this guy over here too, because it's easier if I just measure. Um, yeah, actually I'll just measure once about that. I'm just gonna measure there. Just four quarters, okay? And if you're comfortable, you could do this. Just now from now on, I don't measure anything because I'm just gonna do like that. And to get the horizontals, I do a um, 45. That gives me all the crossings. Um, and I can flip it up. You gotta make sure you're, you're always square. Now for this, I think I should use my little guy. I can find it. Yeah, here it is. Yeah, this is useful. <laughs> it's kind of like having screwdrivers or wrenches, you know, you need the, all the different sizes. Um, so this can be fun and, you know, quick. So I'm just picking up all my points, oops. And again, if you didn't have it, T-square, you could just do this. Right? And you could still get it done. What you shouldn't do is do this. Even if you did the crossings and then you just went, uh, well, let's do that. Let's do the crossings. Always, 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 always use two tools, okay? Um, unless, of course, you have to do something like that. So now, you know, if, if you go like this, it's just, you know, it's just not gonna be perfect. Um, so stick to the uh, method, I guess. And um, once I do the grid, I do the grid because I had my sketch. Okay, here I need my other crossings. And there we go. It's Saturday night. Um, okay. I don't know if you hear the sounds, but lots of activity. Okay, so that's my beautiful light grid. And now I'm just going to, um, this, Triangles are nice, um, just also in the same way that these are, uh, because the section is a nice beveled edge, um, as opposed to these guys, which have a double kind of notch cut out from the days when we had to do inking, so it wouldn't smudge. Um, so I'm not sure which triangles you have, but um, there is a little advantage to those. Um, to the ones that have the, 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 the inch markings. Okay, so now it's easy because now I just copy my design. Okay. Um, now you might wanna do little dots, but don't do them too big because it gets messy. It's so nice to have it all. Uh, perhaps even here, you could do it first by doing it light because that way, if you make a mistake, it's a light mistake. <laughs> um, yeah, now I could use, yeah, I can see my grid is not perfect, but I was gonna say for those, for those bits that are diagonals at 45, I could use, in fact, um, I could use, in fact, this little triangle. So in fact, I'm gonna do that of all the parts that I know for sure I'm gonna need. I'm just copying now. 
And that way I get those out of the way. Now I finish, hopefully without making a mistake, but again, doing it light, you know, if you make a mistake, it's less. Um, notice how it's an interesting thing, um, and many of you will have this, um, this happen. So we have the, the section, then we go around, and it's the mirror image, right? And then we go around, and it's, you know, what we did. And notice how this line comes down this way and then comes down that way. As it happens, that will be a single plane. So we'll have two triangles, but eventually we'll join these two triangles to make one big, um, well, uh, what is that, parallelogram, okay? Um, so keep that in mind because we'll optimize the design later when we build it to make it nice and smooth there. Usually, if there is a straight line going like this across the corner on your flat out version, it probably means that it's gonna be two pieces which then get joined and make one single surface. Okay, I hope that rule holds, but I think it does. Um, so that's why I'm doing now one straight line in one shot. And it's hard to see still because it's not finished, but. Um, with that. So now I'm gonna darken it and I can just do it from left to right. Um, some people like to put the pencil down and then you know push the uh, push the triangle against it and then pivot to get it right. But I don't know. I I've never done it actually that way. I like to read how much room I need for the pencil because remember you can't you can't really put the triangle right where you need to draw because otherwise it doesn't leave room for the for the actual lead to to get in there. Um, okay, I think it's still good. <laughs> yeah, again with HB, which you shouldn't use. Um, the uh, difference between the dark lines, it's a little less, so it, it doesn't pop as much as if you did it with the other, but um, okay, make sure I don't make a mistake. All right, almost done. And the thing to look for again is that you have um, you have a kind of a valley on this half, and you have kind of a mountain on that on that part. Okay, if your design is more symmetrical, you might not have that, but but you definitely have to do that rotation because otherwise, um, let me just do a quick, a very very quick example that um, wouldn't be good. Um, if you, if you didn't do that rotation. So for example, this guy right here, and I can do this because it's a simple one. If I, if I did this and then I mirrored it, right? And it's probably would look something like that. Now, if I repeat that again, you can see where I'm going. You would end up with, um, You would end up with a cube where the bottom half would be huge, would be very big. And so the two parts would definitely not be the same, uh, the same volume, the same surface, the same anything, right? They would still fit because this part of the cube, this looks like it's not a cube, but it is, um, would, be, would be just almost like a cap, right? So that's why you always wanna make sure that you do that rotation. Um, and also they wouldn't look the same in, in this way. Like one, one of them will look weird, small, the other too big. Uh, but this, once again, they have to look like they're both right-handed. By that I mean that your hands, you cannot take your hands and stick this hand into that hand, right? It won't fit. 
it would fit if you had two hands like this, right? So that's like right-handed or left-handed. So they're both right-handed or left-handed uh, because I could technically like take this and make it fit inside the other because they're exactly the same. Okay. All right. So that's the drawing. Uh, oh, right. We said we could put the letters. So let's draw uh, what I'm going to do. I'm going to do a couple of lines. Oops, I did them a little too tiny, but that's okay. Where I'm going to put the letters in. And now I just remember that these are uh, A, B, C. This is C. That's a B. That's another B. No, sorry, that's an X. Um, hmm. I'm not sure if I've shown it yet, but there is this cool gadget called a, a razor shield. So some kind of superhero thing, but it's not. Um, so you can protect your drawing while you erase just a little bit that you want to erase. It's actually pretty nice because you can do like emoticons, smileys and stuff. Um, so that is actually X. And this is another C. Okay, so that's the drawing. Here you would put your your lettering, right? Um, try to figure out, center it, maybe there. And if the lines are small, I mean the distance is small, you have enough room. This might depend where you're, you know, what your name, how long your name is and all that, but, um, I'm just gonna write, here's just a quick, let me show you a quick way we would do some lettering. You could do it by hand, you could do it slightly at an angle, um, but this is one nice way that we did it, which was we used the edge um, to do all our verticals. And it was a nice way because, you know, it was fast. All your horizontals, you know, those you have to figure out and all your curves too, but um, I'm not asking you that you do that, but um, just be neat, okay? And that's it. So that's drawing, uh, forget what number it is, but okay, things are getting exciting here. All right, so we'll see you in part three.